In the Senate, uh, we contribute uh, towards the legislation and very important new legislation that we've just brought in this year is uh, introducing the quota system for women in politics and women in government. In our parliament we only have 16% uh, women at the moment, so we are quite poor, I think 189 on the list that uh, I, the IPU have uh, up the upstairs there, so uh, it's not good. Now this, uh, our coming elections, which will be in the spring of 2016, if it doesn't happen before that, uh, we will hopefully look forward to the quota system working for women uh, because uh, we do need more women in politics because we have a right brain and we have a left brain and I have seen over the years implementation of policies and politi uh, you know, policies that women do come up with different issues and indeed in negotiation I have seen women uh, work well together I don't know what it is is it that we, we have less testosterone and we you know we can come to agreements uh, I think in the faster period of time uh, without as much showmanship and uh, I often notice as well in that if a man is chairing uh, a debate and a woman comes up with an idea it might fly over his head a man five minutes later comes up with the same idea Wow, that's a very good idea. You know, would you propose that? Well, excuse me, that was proposed by Mary five minutes ago. Did you not hear it, you know? So there are some little nuances. We do need men to help the women in the parity debate issue. We do, and because it's not just a women's issue, it's a societal issue. Uh, we have actually have 51% uh, of the population who are female, so and we have 16% of the population in the Thaw, so it's not representative at all. Initially, when I started out in politics, I spoke vehemently against quotas, because uh, I thought, oh, well, women will be looked on as second-class citizens. You're there just because, as uh, I say, you have a skirt on you, not because what you have in your brain or because of, of your issues, but uh, over the years, and it took me about 15 years to change my mind. I spoke against it so many times that when I did the research down, uh, saw the countries that had the uh, uh, achieved, uh, you know, maybe 20%, 25, 30%, 40, of oh, very few 40 uh, women in politics, uh, that uh, it was the countries with the quotas that worked. And I have come full circle around and now I am pro quotas and uh, I was the spokesperson as I said for the environment and uh, that was the, uh, the portfolio that implemented so I was very proud to introduce it in the Shannon uh, this year in, in in our government in uh, this, the upper house as we call it and the the, 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 uh, the, the lower house uh, so we'll see how it works hopefully it will work what I am interested and in keeping an eye on to see at the end of the elections is that where the women are put up that they're actually standing in worthwhile constituencies where there's a hope of a seat because uh, very often women are used as sweepers as we call them you know you're there now we have to reach the 30 percent quota because if we don't the parties who don't reach the quota will be fined and their funding will be cut so there's an incentive there so there's a drive on to make sure that we do reach the quota but there's no point reaching a quota just because a woman is there for being a woman not because she has a chance of being elected now it's going to be difficult for our party i'm Fine Gael and we did very very well at the last election so there will be men who will lose their seats as well you know so it's going to be difficult so this time i'm not going to be too hard but it is again uh, that the analysis has to be done are women put up in constituencies where there's a real uh, chance of winning the seat not just because you're there to fill a quota that's very important why is it that women aren't in politics i've seen it myself indeed women go into politics but they are they do leave as well and why is it? Because the love, the work-life balance, and childcare. Again, it's only we're coming, we're improving in our childcare situation in Ireland, and uh, we put uh, 32 million extra this year into the budget for it. And we're introducing the second free preschool year this year as well. We had one free preschool, but that's only three hours in the morning. We're introducing the second year now. But for work-life balance, it is the woman that usually is number one called on your child is sick who goes to collect the child usually the woman you know the, the employer 
even be it male or female sometimes wouldn't think of ringing the father you know to go collect the child so it is it's changing a wee bit but very slowly when I was elected first I was a very uh, I spoke all the time about uh, child care and uh, our local authority was the first in Ireland on foot of what I did to have a creche in the local authority for members and for staff. Now it wasn't a free creche, it was uh, in, in that it was billed by the local authority, so you could say it was subsidised that way, but it was a paying creche. But it was, I think it's important for the children to have them near the workplace. Therefore I would think that every organisation, every commercial organisation should have a creche in the vicinity, be it, you know, three or four organisations together, that the parents, be it mother or father, don't have to go far to visit the child during the day, that they can actually walk to be a partnership and that the child can come into work. And it's like, you know, some place, places have dog-friendly societies. I think workplaces need to be child-friendly as well, you know, if they drop in for a few minutes, that the sky doesn't fall down, you know, that it is family orientated. I have seen, as I said, good women leave politics for that reason, because when the thir second, third child is born, childcare is so expensive that it's not worth their while working, you know? But it's usually the woman that leaves, not the man. Indeed, in Ireland we had a man and a woman married, politicians, TDs, together. And uh, when the second child was born, who left, it wasn't the man, it was the woman. And they're both very good TDs, but she was very good. And uh, she left because of the children. So you have that uh, all the way. I must say, uh, the, the debate on parity uh, downstairs that was at is very interesting. And it is really only by, you know, seeing what other countries are doing. And like this with the IPU here, you get the opportunity to interact and, uh, you know, um, listen to the stories, how they do it, what works well and what doesn't work as well. So I think the IPU, it's a great uh, forum and facility uh, for this type of thing and uh, so definitely I think more of it and uh, of course more women in politics.